Welcome, Terrace Land Gamers. I'm Jackie Jing, and we're breaking down the Blight Dragon Elegy season. We're going to give you an in depth preview of season one, and we got a giveaway, so make sure you stick around. But before we dive in, let's take a look back at last season. Here's a quick recap. goodness so cool so great looking back at season zero but let's look ahead to the new season and i got some really special guests here with me to do just that let's give a warm welcome to canon hi canon tell us about hi. yourself and you're a big fan of mmos i am i am uh i don't know what else to say other than uh yeah i i <laughs> do youtube i do twitch and uh my primary my my primary content excuse me is mmorpgs i did play a little bit of terrace land back in the day and um yeah just if it's an mmo i'm gonna play it oh great and now let's introduce negra and i would love to hear more about you and you're a little newer to terrace land yeah, so I'm a veteran MMO player. I've been playing uh, high NPV for a long, long time. Been participating in tournaments. I'm casting tournaments as well. And I'm just looking forward to what the Terrace Land Season 1 has to offer. Oh, we're so happy to have you. And we got Amphi in the house. Tell the audience about yourself and what you think about Terrace Land. Um, hi, I'm Ampi. I'm a Twitch streamer. I'm a hardcore MMO player and uh... I'm very excited to see what season one has to offer. Aw, and we're excited to have you here too. And last but certainly not least is Guzu. Please introduce yourself. And uh, you've got some hours into Terrace Land, right, Guzu? Yeah, <laughs> I got a few hours. I've played it a little bit before <laughs> uh, in the past. It's, uh, you know, I've been dabble, dibble dabbling a little bit with a bard, but uh, I'm excited <laughs> to see what's going to happen with the next, uh, next season and what's to come. That's badass. Dibbling, dabbling with a bard. I'm sorry, I love that sentence. But we're so happy to have you all here. And we have so many awesome reveals to show you all today. So let me break down our schedule. We'll be talking about a new map, new dungeons, a new raid, new features, and who likes free stuff? We got to give away two people, so make sure that you stick around. You could possibly win a prize. But without further ado, let's get things rolling. Let's learn more about where this newest season takes place. Let me tell you the story of Scardino Icefield. The Scardino Icefield is located in the North Pole of Terrace Land with an extremely harsh environment. The first group of people venturing into this land were later called Northerners by future generations. They found dragon bones beneath the icefield and threw the bones into a fire for the flame ritual festival, praying for divine blessings. Since then, the flame has never died out. Thanks to Skyfire, Northerners were blessed by the gods. Skyfire brought humans alchemy. It also helped them build the Auden Dynasty and the magnificent Fort Grenny on the Scardino Ice Field. However, gems can invite jealousy. Skyfire and Alchemy also attracted endless pirates. The Auden royal family have guards protecting where the dragon bones were found, also known as the Dragon Bone Ruins. 
The discovery of the bones was widely discussed among folks when Auden the First made a pact with frost dragons and came riding a dragon. Seeing this, the Northerners were deeply convinced that this land was protected by dragons. In the blight dragon elegy season, adventurers will start a new journey on this ice field. However, you will find that the Grenny dynasty is no longer in its golden age. The legend of the Auden royal family and dragons degraded with the passage of time, and what was once their homeland has become a demon lair. Along this journey, you'll encounter the reclusive Snow Lion Clan and the Frost Dragon Hidden Keep within the ice field, and witness an epic tale of revenge plotted by the once noble royals. Enter the Scardino Ice Field if you dare. Okay, dragons, pirates, a oh, winter wonderland. There's a lot to discuss there. Um, I'd love to get your first impressions of the Scardino ice field. And uh, Guzu, how about I start with you? I just I made eye contact with you first. So well, it why makes not? sense. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, th I think it's pretty cool. I will say, as a, uh, a, a Scandinavian person, it's kind of nice having some representation of the North. I do appreciate that. So there's that. <laughs> Uh, it looks pretty interesting to me. I mean, it, it's kind of cool with like an, the icy theme and the, the dragons and all that stuff. It's 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 cool. I dig it. Okay, Cannon, what so, about you? Uh, or Negra. Well, but... Sorry, Negra. You go. <laughs> okay. Pop off. Sorry. I just, since we talk about Scandinavia and like Northerners or whatever, I live in the mountains. And, you know, initially I wasn't ready for the winter because I was like, oh, summer is all nice and warm. And now that it started getting colder, I was like, oh, I'm not ready for this. But now I'm definitely in the mood for the winter. I've, you know, gotten all cozy with my with my hoodies, with my uh, winter clothes as well. And seeing that Tarisland is also moving into the winter season now is actually very fitting. So I'm just gonna go get my hot chocolates and my blankets, and I'm ready to play that season. Oh my gosh, you're making that sound so cozy. I love it. <laughs> um, sorry to cut you off, Cannon. Tell me what your thoughts were. I can't tell if her background is real. Is your background real? <laughs> it is. Is it? <laughs> like you're talking it's about cozy? So cool. I can't tell. That, I mean, it's nice. It I like green screen, actually. People think this is an elevator in my background. I, it's not, I by the way. But it, it's it's awesome. I can throw something. It's awesome. People it. say it's an elevator. I, it's not an elevator. Um, yeah, it? so the last time I played Terrace Land, it was just... It was just all very... Like, I really actually like the graphics to Terrace Land. I really like the art aesthetic. Um, but the last time I played, it just you're, everywhere you go, it's, it's you know it's water, and it's grass. The the seeds that we just saw here, you know, there's I, I feel like it's a little bit of a different take on it, and some of the scenes look really nice with the sunset. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what it actually looks like on my PC. But from the video, it looked great. Aw, Ampy, what about you? Yeah, it looks really exciting. I'm a I'm a big dragon fan myself, so the the dragon. Uh, Ice Dragon theme is uh, definitely up my alley. This, the, the keeps and the, the castles look amazing too. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that it's this fantasy world with this northern aesthetic. Um, was there anything about the northern aesthetic that kind of stuck out to you or, or the wintry wonderland? Like, I, I kind of like the abandoned icy fortresses, but anything like that that you were like, ooh, that looks cool? Uh, yeah, I mean... The, the really cool thing for me was like the ships, the pirate ships area, yes. and then uh, all the snow on the ground next to them. Dude, I don't know. It's just, it just looks really cool. Love it. Okay, so right now we're throwing up some images, giving you a closer look at the zone. So why don't we pivot to that? And um, I want to chat with you guys a little bit about what you're thinking looking at these zones. Um, is there a first impression that you have? There's so many points on this map. Are you like, ooh, I'd like to explore that area? Guzu, I'll put you in the hot seat first again. Oh, gosh. Okay. I mean... It... From what I can see, it looks like you're going to go from boat, so it looks pretty interesting with the Port Ailson in the in the eastern part of the, the area, and like you're slowly working your way more and more west, I guess, to like the uh, the big the big baddies, I suppose. And we saw that big shot of the fire. I guess it looks like a citadel at the uh, towards the uh, the middle of it. So I'm excited to see what that's going to be like. I guess that that's that looks interesting to me at least. And I like the ports. I think the coming by boat and sailing into like the unknown is gonna is cool. Ken, anything sticking out to you about the map? Um, you know, Me? what do you think about the new zone? Yeah. Oh, I'm actually like, 
is this a bard logo here I, sorry if this is off topic yes. but like like i'm not a bard so i don't know what production <laughs> is doing over here but <laughs> i mean if we're playing today now, now I'm not you are healing. a bard player just saying oh i mean i'm pretty God. sure guzu in the intro said something about being a bard so hey, okay, yeah. play a bard a little bit what's okay. going on here like... dibbly dally is very bard yeah Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What do you, okay. What do you want me to say? I played a little bit of bard. That's what I played. <laughs> I uh, honestly, bard okay. player. Seriously, yeah. when it comes to the map, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest. Guy, it, it, it just it's it's a map. <laughs> I mean, the video yeah. before looked pretty nice. I, I'm, you know, I, I'd be uh, I'm definitely looking forward to um, seeing what the new zones look like because, like I said, I really like the art style. But it, for me, it's one of those things. I just got to go in the game and, and see it for myself. Okay, so you're just ready to dive in and get I'm ready to, to dive in. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I actually thought that last image was really interesting. Nagar, I kinda wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Are you someone who likes to go to like every edge of the map or are you just like heading right towards that giant castle fortress? Like what are you thinking looking at this? Yeah, so I'm actually not a person that um, explores maps at all. Like, I literally <laughs> just go straight to the dungeons and the raids and the big bad bosses or whatever. And mm -hmm. people, like, usually get really angry about it. Like, you know, when there's a map and I just didn't discover, like, one tiny portion of it. And I was like, just go there. And I'm like, no, there's nothing there for me to see. I want to raid. <laughs> I am 100% the same vibe. What about for the rest of you, Ampy? Are you going to be going to like every crevice and corner or you're just like, nah, give me my big baddies? Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to check out the dragon area right away. I mean, Aww. it just looks it just looks super cool. You're uh, a big dragon guy, huh? I, I am, dude. What can I say? <laughs> Jeez. Okay. All right. That's cool. I'm sorry. You didn't see it? You, you didn't Dragons see it like, and no, pirates. I saw it. Yes. Come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it like looked pretty good. Like... I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It did. It did. I love it. And he's like, come on, dragons, like enough said. We don't even need to say anything else. Okay, so how is this new zone different from what we've seen in Terrace Land? Well, now we're going to talk more about new season mechanics, new raids, and new dungeons with new bosses. Are you all ready to see what lies ahead in Scardino Icefield? Let's show you these dungeons. Okay, here's the first one. It is called Bloody Nightmare. While alchemy brought the kingdom to greatness, it nearly spelled its doom. Witnessing her father's untimely demise and the family's downfall, the seeds of hatred and vengeance sprout in Princess Alicia. A sinister creature known as Nightmare keenly perceived Alicia's fear and sorrow. Nightmare materialized her most painful dreams. Wandering in the shadows, she wreaked havoc wherever she went, savoring every moment of revenge as she laid waste to all in her path. Um, okay, so loving her. <laughs> any any initial thoughts, any reactions from that? That looks pretty good. That Honestly, yeah. that, does, that looks pretty good. That was a big eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see any eye. I saw I was you did, there's a big I, eyeball. You didn't see I, the I, eye. I was distracted, that eye, I was distracted by other things. Okay. Um, oh, so Cannon and I were definitely distracted by Alicia, and you all uh -huh. were like, look yeah, at that giant man. eye. So I don't know what that says. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Out. Men of culture unite. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, okay. You all ready for Dungeon 2? Ice sure. Tomb yeah. Fortress. All right, let's roll it. Deep within the frigid Ice eye. Tomb Fortress, the ancient frost dragons lay dormant, shrouded in an eternal blanket of snow and ice. The arrival of Autumn the First shattered this timeless silence, forging a bond between humans and the dragons. The once honorable royal guards and the ice dragon envoy that defended this fortress to its death became the lowest servants of the dragons, permanently trapped in this frozen world. Man, I okay. love like icy abandoned looking ruins. I don't know what it is. Like that was really cool to me too. What do y'all think? I mean, this is all you, Ampy. This is dragon, dragon is central. This is right yeah. Yeah. Alley, dude. <laughs> I see dragon three central. different dragons there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're all on the... It looked like there was a massive gauntlet. Wanna... That looks pretty cool. Like, do you want to fight them though or befriend the dragons? Like, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm killing them. Oh, oh okay. For the loot. It's for the loot. <laughs> oh. So oh you want to slay gosh. the dragon? You're a dragon slayer. I'm a dragon slayer. Yeah. Oh. That's You're actually not a my dragon tamer. Oh, man. We find them and we slay them. I'm getting loot. For their treasure. 
Um, Ampy, though, I do really, like, you know, when you think of dragons, you always think of fire. So I just love that they're in this ice world. Am I wrong? It's just kind of a unique twist. Yeah, We've no, seen I... it, but it's, like, fun. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Aw. I love all the different <laughs> dragons. They're, like, part dragon, part, I don't know, monster, human. You know, like, they're standing up. But, yeah. I, anyway, are I we ready think, for um... our... Th but, well, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to quickly add as well, because you were mentioning how dragons usually are with fire and they're with ice here. And I think it's the same with the pirates, right? Usually when you see pirates, uh, they have this like submarine beach theme, but having the pirates here True. on the frozen island is actually really cool too. Yeah. I love that too. Guzu, you have like such a reaction to that. What? <laughs> it's the northern man. No, I was You're just like, thinking about oh. like just, pirates yeah. and the, like, the winter and the, you know, it's cool. Because yeah. where's their parrots? You know, they're not, maybe have the crow instead of a parrot, you know? True. Know. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Or dragons, let's talk... personal frozen dragons. <laughs> I know. I, I just love the whole frozen twist to everything. It's really cool. This is the complete opposite, though, for Dungeon 3. This is called Incendiary Lava. Take a look. Eurobos has long been aware of Princess Alicia's vengeful thirst and promised to purge this sinful land. In exchange, the princess would lend her body for the Phoenix Paravelli to inhabit until she birthed it in its new form, the Flame Phoenix. The Flame Phoenix's physical form is invincible in the real world, meaning it could only be destroyed within the realm of consciousness. Without hesitation, Alicia embraced the seed of retribution, vowing to nurture it and until the phoenix of vengeance emerged from the flames of her hatred. Okay, um, that Hellfire General was super cool. I absolutely love that guy. And then um, I love phoenixes. I know that Ampy said he's a he's a dragon person. Any other phoenix fans? Is that just me. So you're gonna slay the phoenix, or you're gonna like befriend it? Well, you can't. Be no, I'm not a phoenix what? guy. You, you cannot. Can no, you, you cannot. No, because you're like, you're gonna go to sleep and then kill it in your dreams, right? Oh or whatever, my god. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No conscious. Yeah, something conscious. Yeah. You're right. The There's something about unaliving phoenixes that makes me a little bit sad. But I don't know. I mean, just aesthetically, just thought it was super cool. What did What did we think of this world? This is kind of different from like the frozen vibe we've been seeing. It's cool. It's like you're delving in like beneath the surface, right? Like the little mm -hmm. lurk something below, I guess. And there's like some evil, I don't know, like they, they, they look very evil. This guy looks bad. He looks like bad, bad. He's got those, you know, bad eyes and the big yes. grin, you know? I do like the, the character helmet. design. Character yeah. design yeah, is, is It's pretty cool. I do Solid. agree. Like this yeah. dude you looks really pretty like cool. really like the character design, huh? See, like, this, like, this can we like make him right. playable? Like I'd like to play him as a class. <laughs> I love that, yeah. What were you saying, Ampy? Uh, I was, I was going to say, this looks like it's like the basement of the keep, like there's some crazy like demon portal down there that you could take this into. Yeah, yeah this, this dungeon looks really fun. And I definitely think the villains are really scary, like in a good way. Like I'm like, ooh, I wanna face them. But we're not done yet. We got one more dungeon. The last one is Scarlet Frostwood. To safeguard Snow Lion Village, to take revenge on this cruel world, to reunite with one's love, they are manipulated by the dark forces, scheming Aww. for a storm. I, I want to hug that one. Engulf the entire <laughs> Scardino ice field. Not as huggable, the second one. The second one might step on me and hurt me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what do we think of the Scarlet Frostwood? I don't know. I want to be in that cave. Go, go on. <laughs> no, I said, I just, like, we were coming out of this cave, and I was like, that just looks super cool. I'd want to be in that cave. But what were you saying, Guzu? I don't know. I, I think I, my, my brain got paused. Someone else talked. I forgot what I wanted oh. to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, no one else could speak. <laughs> I, I personally really love... Um, I mean, first of all, this is super cute. The one with, like, the snowballs. Little and, like, rolly the things. Mm -hmm. That is very so cute. cute. But I also just, I, I do love the aesthetic of the, the red tree that is just in the middle of this like snow, like frozen land. It mm -hmm. just looks very cool. I don't know what it is, if it's like possessed by demons or some other like dark magic, but I like it and I want it in my garden. No, the tree stuck out to me and I feel like Negra, that would just like go perfectly in your background. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I could replace this Perfect. one. Perfect. <laughs> well, that was our last dungeon. So let's go around and talk to each of you about what do you think of the boss's appearances? Was there um, a boss that stuck out to you guys? Um, I know, Canon, that um, Alicia definitely <laughs> caught her eye in the first dungeon, but was there another one that you were vibing with? There were other ones. <laughs> <laughs> the Hellfire General. Oh, oh the yeah, cute, that's right. The cute yeah, 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 those guys. Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. By yeah. the way, the cute little snowball. I feel like whoever designed that character, it was probably trying to. Yeah, I feel like he was trying to create something that's like you know bad. Badass. I, I'm pretty sure I and like a I brute or right. something. Yeah, like like yeah. you know. And then you're like sitting here saying he's cute and adorable. He's probably like, really? <laughs> you know I said I, I mean? want to give it's him a hug. hug. I, I mean, I see it. I definitely see it. You could definitely, I, I could definitely see like the plushy side to him. But uh, yeah, I like, I like the, I like the fire guy. You know, I thought he looked pretty, um, pretty badass. Um, and then you know, I mean, obviously the first boss. It's like the first, the first lady. You can't. I mean. You yeah. can't forget about I mean, it. Yes. I mean, yes. give that man a raise, whoever designed that character, because that, that dude is pulling his weight. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Negro, what about you? Which one stuck out to you? I actually also am looking most forward to this one, just because not only her aesthetic, I mean, she looks really cool and badass, mm -hmm. but also, like, when we saw her cast as sigils, like, it looked like a very cool mechanic. I don't know what she's going to do with the sigils, but I'm looking forward to figuring it out. She, she's just giving power, you know, I'm yeah. like, and just fearsome. I absolutely love the design here. Um, Ampy, was there a boss or dungeon that you were just like, oh, wow, this is calling to me? Um, actually, I think the uh, one with the Phoenix and the Hellfire General looked really cool. Um, I think the idea of the Phoenix itself, the, what, you have to do some sort of phasing mechanic to get into it. It seems pretty interesting, so... Oh, yeah, I love phoenixes. I, I was definitely a big fan of this dungeon. Um, Guzu, what about you, though? Was there a boss that stuck out to you? I, I think I agree with Ampy. I think that the idea behind like having a corporal realm or some sort of a thing where you go down and then you need to face a phoenix down there and then maybe go up and then he becomes vulnerable to your attacks or something could be kind of cool. Sounds uh, interesting, I think. I have a okay. completely um, like, random question to this like, other face thing. So since you guys uh, you know, play other MMOs as well. Whenever you go into like a portal and you're then like in another realm, do you call it like the downstairs phase, the upstairs phase, inside phase? What is it? I think inside phase, called? right? Oh, it's downstairs. definitely downstairs. Yeah, downstairs. It's downstairs. I think downstairs. <laughs> yeah. I'm also yeah. I'm downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> No, I have I'm no idea what, what you're talking about. Like you're, doing, wow. you're doing two faces, you're entering a portal, you're going somewhere else. <laughs> it's like I a down understood. phase and then an up yeah, you're call, you're first going phase, yeah. phase, bro. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it makes oh sense. Canon phased by that phase question, apparently. I am. That, that, yes. I, I, um, I, I like the pun. What do you mean? I mean, we just, we don't pay, we don't like, we just call phase one, phase two, man. I don't know. Oh my God. Oh, God. Boring. Oh, oh whatever. Uh, uh. Um, I do want to ask all of you, which dungeon do you want to take on immediately that you're most excited about? And uh, just to rehash, we started off with the Bloody Nightmare. Um, then we looked at the Ice Tomb Fortress. And then um, I we've been hearing a lot of hype for incendiary lava, and then the last Look one is the eye, man. It's big. How could you not see that? I, I, that's yeah, that's dude, the I'm eye. Serious? I did not see that. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. On. I did not see that. Eye. I'm not yeah, I'm even team kidding. Bloody nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Same. This one for sure. I'm an ice Two. fortress sure. guy still. I'm still standing with the dragons. Okay. So um, it looks like we're really digging the first dungeon, though. And um, I, I mean, Alicia is really just incredibly popular with all of us, rightfully so. Okay, very, very cool. And then, Ampy, what did you say? You were the odd one out. Which one were you vibing with? Was it Incendiary Lava yeah, or I'm the sadly Ice Tomb the only, Fortress? Ice Tomb Fortress. I'm the only dragon person here. You guys apparently He's the dra hate He's dragons. He's got that dragon. Dragons. It's just... We don't hate dragons. We're just I, not yeah, obsessed about dragons. You got, you got dragons. no dragon energy. <laughs> so. Oh, my goodness. But I loved what I saw with the new dungeons and bosses, but we also got a new raid that will feature 10 bosses, and we're going to break it down. The first raid is Grey Fog Citadel with five fearsome foes. So meet the Council of Four. Next is Devil in Mirror. 
Then we have the eye of the abyss. Guzu, you got your eye in. Yeah, I see it. That's all you, Guzu. <laughs> drop some hype here. <laughs> then we have the demon of dark flames. Ooh, loving that, actually. And then last but not least, Guider. Oh, oh Cannon. Oh, yeah. I Loving mean... Guider, too. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. How is this is my thing, though. <laughs> this is, I, mean, I mean, you're not wrong, but how is it? <laughs> Maybe he wants to take the full picture. You I know? mean, like, damn, <laughs> man. All right. I'm, okay. Not. All right. Listen, listen, listen. I'm sure the audience agrees with me, okay? Maybe the audience, wherever they're watching this, they can let us know if they're Team Cannon, Team I, or Team Dragon, okay? I'm yeah. pretty sure they're going to be Team Cannon. Definitely team cannon. I'm sorry. Mm. Guider, Guider's <laughs> really awesome. This, they're all really cool, though. So um, what do you think of the raid boss's appearances? Was there anyone that you really, really liked? Um, this group is pretty cool. Nigger, which one were you like, ooh, when they popped up on, on screen? So, of course, the last boss. I mean, that one is just, you know, really Guider. Cool. But, yeah. yeah. But the boss before the last one, um, I thought it's really cool. Like... Like the the arms are like yeah. not attached, so I feel like there might be certain mechanics with, you know, the arms like moving around to different places compared to the boss, and then you have to watch out for them, and that could be like really cool mechanic wise. But, yeah, definitely. Yeah, aesthetically, uh, I'm with the last boss as well. I'm Team Cannon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Team Love Cannon. It. They're loving Love Guider. It. Um. Do I even need to ask Cannon? Um, obviously, you're <laughs> digging the last one, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, honestly, the one that we're looking at right now, he, he does look pretty cool. But then, obviously, when, when we went to the next frame, I mean, it was, it was pretty much over. Yeah. Okay. She looks fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, I they do that. a great job with these models. They do. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. give that man a raise once again. <laughs> I love this staff too, and and the top. At first, I thought it was a giant sword, and then I was like, oh no, that's just like a really cool staff. But um, yes, digging Guider for sure. Um, Ampy and Guzu, what about for y'all? Um, Demon of Dark Flames is getting a little bit of hype as well. Or Guzu, you sticking with the Eye of the Abyss? Okay, I'm not like an eye We're person. So no, I think he is an eye person. An eye. Like, You're like, an eye oh, guy I now. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think I agree with the girl though with the the guy with the arms that was the one that looked the most most, most interesting because it's like <laughs> i love how they just not i love how you i'm sorry to cut you off but i love how you're talking about this guy and production just pulls up the yeah i know yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah oh man he's gonna w talk about the eye now team. oh yeah he's gonna, you're he's gonna the eye guy. Oh, <laughs> no, actually looking at the eye again it, it, it does actually look pretty cool yeah guys i really like the eye it's really cool look at bro the, it's an eye it's it, it's like a mouth on the bottom of the eye I don't know, it's it's actually. Thing. Doesn't it look like that? Yeah, Sorry, there's little things. things. I will yeah. say, this looks like a mind control boss. It's gonna mind control oh. someone. Okay, I'm and, with you there. fire lasers out of the eyes. I'm with you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be some mind control action. Um, it sounded like, though, obviously, like, aesthetically, we were leaning towards Guider, but when it came to, like, actually playing one of these, uh, baddies, that Demon of Dark Flames, we were all kind of, like, mechanics-wise, this could be the one. Am I wrong, Ampy, or what, what were you thinking? I, I think the eye goes hard in, in mechanic-wise. <laughs> oh, okay, we're, we're going eye, He thinks okay. there's a dragon, so he doesn't, he's not invested right, in this yeah, conversation. Exactly. <laughs> it summons a dragon, you know? Oh, no! Oh, it could no. be a dragon oh, eye, actually. <laughs> no! <laughs> My goodness. Okay. Well, we actually have video of the first boss fight, giving you a Ooh. sneak peek at the raid. So, are you all ready for that? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Let's check okay. it out. Okay. Okay. So, we actually have video of the first boss fight, giving you all a sneak peek at the raid. So, let's roll that video. And the Great Fog Citadel is a 10 player raid. Range of mechanisms and effects from different dimensions, spirits, chaos, and other realms. This is gameplay of the Devil in Mirror showing off their mechanics. So, um, and then it's a little bit hard to tell, but this is called Summon Help, and the Devil in Mirror will periodically summon mirror devils to attack player characters. And when its health reaches a certain threshold, it will split into copies that move toward the center of the arena. If the copies touch each other, they will heal and significantly increase their attack power. And players must quickly distinguish between the real and fake mirror devils and eliminate them, and use control skills to slow down their movement when necessary. So, pretty cool there. 
Oh, oh some pizza then, slices. The classic. Yes! Yeah. This is called Deadly Roulette. Um, the devil in the mirror with Deadly Roulette charges and then divides the field in eight fan-shaped parts. Um, Guzo, I love that you lit up for that one. So. Yeah, it's cool. Like it's the it's the classic like a boss fight yeah. with the pizza slices going around. I mean, it looks like there's some stuff going on though well. with the portals as well on the on the little ground. I... Yeah, oh, there's, there's some a... balls like fixating on the players in the back I see as well. Yeah, actually, okay, so that one that you just pointed out is Mirror Abyss, and that targets one player creating a magic circle at their current location, and then a few seconds later that magic circle will become a damage zone. And then, oh my gosh, we're in prismatic <laughs> light, I think. The devil in the mirror will cast prismatic light, and the light will be reflected by the devil mirrors at the edge of the field, and it takes up a lot of space, so get out of the way there. And then this is Mirror Realm, and this is a core skill of the devil in the mirror you can see them split into two bodies both coming up from the floor and you got to take down that clone okay so players need to attack the clone based on their group assignment I think you can see those little markers above their heads so take note of that um, and players should take note of the mark they received and move appropriately so okay what are we thinking of this this disco floor <laughs> This looks crazy. Yeah, what are we thinking of the mechanics so far? I see, I see, it looks like Guzu has the wheels turning. I saw your finger kind no, of No, I'm like just thinking, I'm just it. thinking, yeah. like, uh, what, what, what could, like, because, uh, I mean, uh, there's a few things overlapping, I guess it could get a little bit hectic, I guess, with, mm -hmm. with some of the mechanics overlapping, but that, that's also what I'm gonna come as interesting, when there's multiple things happening at the same time, you gotta coordinate with the raid group and stuff, mm -hmm. you know? But it, it looks cool, it looks... There are a lot of individual tasks yeah. that I'm noticing. P yeah, like, this isn't... It seems like there's quite a few mechs with, where each individual person needs to do their individual task. Otherwise, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some forgiveness there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a raid wipe. I'm not sure. But these raids are genuine, generally like really fun for me personally. But I feel like sometimes doing these types of raids in a pug could be a potential nightmare where you need <laughs> every single person to know their specific role, which is different to someone else. Um, but this is, but this looks pretty fun, to be honest. Yeah. Just, it, it looks pretty good. So they're trying to figure out which one is the correct one, and they're killing that one, I guess. Yeah. Well, With the, those, like, four spirits or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Ampy, what about you? Is there anything, like, taking in all these different mechanics that you're like, oh, this, this could be really challenging? I like what, liked what Cannon was saying, that, like, hey, you really need to know what your individual assignment is if you're heading into this, right? Yeah, it looked, it looked kind of difficult uh, with just the amount of movement that you'd have to do. Just, you know, moving between the, the slices into mm. the, you know, the floor, you know, dodging the tiles, and then there's big laser beams that come out, maybe you have a ball on you. So I think if it overlapped and you have, like, a ball with the laser beams and you're running from it, I think it could get pretty crazy if it's not handled right. I think crazy is a great word for it. Negro, well, what were your initial thoughts seeing all these mechanics popping off? Like if you were thrown into this situation? <laughs> I mean, I personally like it. It definitely looks um, very complex and very, like there's many different things going on, which is something that I personally like. Like it's not just, oh, there's one single boss that you're hitting all of the time. It basically is like, oh, it's single target, but then once in a while it's splitting, then you hit uh, two depending on which group you're in. Then you have to do uh, some target switching where you have to find the correct mirror. And while all of that is happening while you're doing your rotation, you also have to like deal with all of the other mechanics and figure out the correct uh, space on the floor to move with. You can see there's already indicators on the floor that are kind of marking these squares that you're going to have to eventually figure out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a lot of things going on and I will be excited to progress through this boss. Aw, I love to hear that. And um, Guzu, I know that you shouted pizza slices at one point, which I like love that yeah. name. Um, was there a certain mechanic that stuck out to you? And again, we ain't quizzing y'all, so you can be like little laser beam or pizza slice or whatever, you know, just any visual cue that worked for you that you really liked. Was there one that really stuck out to you? I mean, ge generally speaking, the pizza slice is like a... Uh, it's like a term that I guess is used for a lot of these kind of things where like you gotta mm -hmm. move around the boss. Also the thing that's playing right now with the different squares I think is quite interesting because it looks like there's a certain pattern you gotta follow along with it so it requires some coordination from the raid. So I think that's kind of cool too. And it also leaves up to a little bit of frustration I guess. People are messing it up a lot. But that's that's a part of the fun part about raiding I guess. There... It looks like you can place it almost. Yeah, I think they're yeah. like running around and they're placing the two things and then it's like exploding out from those placements, I think. 
Uh, Negro, were you going to say something? Was there a mechanic that stuck out to you? No, I just think I agree. That's what it looked like. As if it, like mm -hmm. two players maybe got a uh, debuff, they place like they they basically move to one of the squares, and then from that square it would like be moving outward, which is. I think that's cool because then you can kind of decide on a strategy and what you want to play, depending on what's currently going on on the platform. So uh, that's something I personally like about boss fights. If there's not just like one way of uh, solving a mechanic, if there's like multiple different ways on how you can figure out something as a group, whatever works for your group best. Okay, great. I love that answer. Um, I think that, you know, it's all about problem solving and you don't know, like, what's going to lead to the solution, right? Uh, Canon, I feel like I see your wheels turning and you're already kind of, like, <laughs> analyzing how to take on this boss. Tell me what you're thinking. No, I, I, I'll be honest, though. What I'm thinking is, yeah, like, if you're playing this, especially if you're playing this with people that are doing crossplay, like a mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like people are definitely going to get jailed. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, straight up, like, I'll be honest, I just, I, I see people getting really jailed by this. Mm -hmm. uh, because generally speaking with a lot of raids, it's not so much that a mechanic is individual, like a single mechanic specifically is so difficult. You know what I mean? It's like you need like 0.1 second reaction time to do it. It's usually not like that. The, mm -hmm. Each individual mechanic for every raid is usually very simple. The challenge is usually, can you get X amount of players to mm. complete their task at the same time? Like, that's what it is. You know, like, can you get, for example, eight people to complete a task together? Like every, like not a single person can mess up. Even though it might be a simple task, it's it's usually a challenge getting everyone to complete it correctly. And um, that's where I feel like some struggles may, may happen with this raid. Mm -hmm. Visually, it looks pretty good. Um, and, just what I'm noticing is there's a lot of flash and flash is great, but flash also confuses people slash mm -hmm. pugs. And um, I think that's where a lot of the challenge, I don't think anything in this fight individually is just, oh, once you figure it out, it's like, oh, this is too difficult. You know, I don't think yeah. it's going to be like that. I think it's like, oh, that's pretty simple, but it's all of the flash at first, like, you know, the floors lighting up and all, and all that stuff that might kind of throw people off guard in the beginning. So I do from... think the main issue here is that your um, puck friends just need to learn how to play cannon. <laughs> <laughs> my puck friends? Oh, I don't oh play with pugs. Oh my gosh, oh viewers. Viewers, viewers and streamers. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I can't. Viewers and streamers. I, yeah, I do yeah, think yeah. that's a good point though, Canon, um, that like you do think this is going to require a coordinated effort, right? Essentially is uh -huh. what I'm getting from you, right? Yeah, yeah, everyone just has to to complete their individual. Because usually if it's a task that everyone has to do, but it's the same task and you do it together, it's kind of like you follow the crowd type of thing, mm -hmm. you know? Everyone group up at 12 o'clock. That's a lot easier for a pug or a raid or anyone to, or any group to accomplish or to, to complete. But when it's like, no, you have to go here, you have to go here, you have to go here, that's where it can kind of get confusing for people. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't know, I don't pug. So you're saying no Leroy Jenkins <laughs> action here. That would not be yeah, the Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Uh, Ampy, I feel like I want to hear a little bit more from you. I haven't picked your brain enough. Was there anything that you noticed about the mechanics or your, like, strategy-wise? Oh, I, I would like to try this out. Or what What are your main thoughts right now? Um, I think one thing that I was noticing, because I was just, I was kind of, like, lost in the fight for a little bit, the, I didn't realize that, there was pools that were left on the ground. So it looks like if people don't manage those correctly, that would be a real big problem when you ran into the, like the, you know, other movement things you have to deal with. Okay, great. Well, honestly, the sneak peek looks awesome. And the other raid, which includes five other bosses, will be announced later. So make sure to keep an eye out. But loving this. Okay, I know that you all are chomping at the bit to hear some more about the new features. So let me tell you more about them. Roll the tape. First, Terrace Land will have a new level cap. The level cap will be increased to level 50. It was previously level 40. New and returning players. Every season in Terrace Land means a fresh start. Level 40 veterans and newcomers alike will aim to level up to 50. All new players only need to complete one series of quests and they will level up to 40. And once season one drops, players will be able to do a quest that upon completion will boost their character to level 40, taking them right 
to Scardino Icefield so they can start adventuring on the new map right away. So if you're a new player or old, you have options so you can jump right in. It is so important to play Season Zero though. First, obviously it's extremely fun, but play Season Zero so you can learn the game. Season One is updated based on Season Zero, so the knowledge you gain on Season Zero is key to Season One. Also, we got some new talents. For those not acquainted with talents, it is a system that empowers your abilities, and you can choose your abilities and advance them as you see fit with talents. Terrace Land will also have new talents introduced in Season 1. Building upon the existing class talent in the Mystery of the Hollow season, the new season talent, Frozen, will be introduced, offering more strategic options for adventurers' class development. Season 1 will also bring in a new inscribed stone system, allowing for stat augmentation. Embrace the might of dragons with our latest inscribed stone, Dragon Force. Four distinct Dragon Forces will unleash their unique effects. Each force covers a different inscribed stone node area. Beyond the battle effects of the inscribed stone system, these forces will additionally trigger the Dragon Might effect, adding a layer of strategy to the effects of your inscribed stones. The key notability. Every 10 seconds during battle, you gain Dragon Power, which slightly boosts your attack and defense for a duration of three seconds. The keynote effect. Whenever you acquire dragon power, there is a possibility of gaining extra dragon power along with extra effects that persist for 10 seconds. Each of the four dragons has its own probability of triggering dragon power, and when this happens, the attributes of the nodes in the corresponding area are simultaneously enhanced. Each of the four dragons possesses unique abilities. And those are the new features. Okay, so a lot to cover here. Let's start off with the level cap. So what are we thinking about the raised level cap? And Ambie, why don't I start with you? I feel like I I haven't started with you yet. So now you're in the hot seat first. Yeah, I, I think I think level cap raises are amazing to get in not only new for new players, like a fresh start um, into the new content, but it's a nice way to kind of get a you know new I don't know character progression system in again because once you hit max level you're, you're done leveling and so it's nice to have that kind of progression again so it's pretty nice anyone else want to weigh in about the level cap um yeah i do like fresh fresh is fun because it's uh <laughs> it's, it's it's like an, as this mp said it's like um whenever you, there's a new expansion or season or whatever the heck in, in in a game it's cool having a little bit of it shouldn't be too much but just having a little bit to work towards and i guess that the leveling is is a cool way of getting into it before you get into the the full end game right so it also makes people able to catch up it's fun it's always fun having stuff to do and leveling up and uh, progressing your character great um and then Obviously excited about the new Frozen Talents and the Dragon Force Inscribed Stone system for um, Canon and Negra, since I haven't heard from either of you yet. What were your thoughts? Um, I mean, again, just leaning into this Frozen aesthetic, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, you go ahead. <laughs> okay. So uh, I personally think um, having like new talents added and uh, new systems added it's always nice for people that like doing the math, you know, like theory crafters. They want to figure out different kinds of combinations of talents. I personally am more of like a feely crafty person. Like I want to like I look through the talents, I read them and I'm like, oh, well, this sounds good uh, in combination with this like other talent that I like. So I'm just going to try it out and I'm going to let other people do the math. So I'm just going to wait until they have mathed it all out <laughs> and then I'm going to be the one playing it. Okay, yeah. so yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like the that. opposite of you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like we are I'm, the same. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm the complete opposite. I prefer oh. to like figure bills out. Like, I'm a big nerd with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Usually, what when I play dive into an MMO, like I go pretty deep into like different builds, and I love theory crafting. Uh, I'm obviously not an expert at this game, but it's, I, I think it's pretty obvious to me that anyone that is, you know, investing a lot of time into this game, this is probably something something that they're extremely excited about maybe even more excited about than the actual raid content itself yeah. um obviously you know new dungeons new raids new gear all that stuff is exciting but uh anytime you add different elements to be being able to build out your character like different talent trees different skill trees all that stuff uh it, it can be really exciting because it could be meta shifting it could it could change uh your class completely or 
not at all right like we'd have to kind of see how how this feels and and what it's like during the um live service but uh yeah i feel like this is fantastic content for for people that are heavily invested in the game and want to um play a, a in a play a more evolved character mm -hmm. for class yeah yeah tons of like new possible synergies with your abilities coming through with the new talents yeah, yeah that sounds pretty cool and uh guzu what type of uh player are you are you leaning more towards the maths like canon or are you like <laughs> no. and we're like y'all figure no, it out no no really i i <laughs> no i'm definitely love more like nagura i think i yeah. uh, I just kind of go with the flow, whatever, whatever is kind of mm -hmm. happening, happening, whatever I think feels the most enjoyable and fun. And then we wait for, uh, we wait for Canon to figure it out and I yeah. just cover his build, <laughs> right? That, that's it. But I, I don't know. I, I like going with the flow with it. And I, I, I definitely agree as, as Canon said as well, for the people that are really invested in the game and for the people that play Terrace Land a lot, it's probably really huge. I mean, I would be excited if, if I was playing Very it a lot. Excited, and yeah. I, yeah. It's like, you've got a lot more depth to your characters and I think that's good. Awesome. Well, we are super excited for those new features, and that's not all that's new, everybody. Okay, so with Season 1, get ready for a new look! Terrace Land will get new gear and new legendary weapons. Roll the video. Legendary weapons, in addition to having advantages over other weapons this. at the same level, also have independent effects, the flames. a distinct appearance, oh and the ability to modify no. special skill Up effects. The ice. They're also indestructible, yes. not for sale, and can be empowered in several ways. The special fragments needed are typically um. dropped from raids, so how do you get a legendary weapon? Legendary weapons require an ancient sacred stone Love the bone arrow. Plus line. Players can get them from the raids and the auction house. And how do you upgrade legendary weapons? The legendary can devour any eligible equipment to strengthen it. After reaching a specific level, you can use materials to transform the legendary weapon's appearance, enhance skills, and level limits. That transformation requires specific equipment, specialized skills, and unique components. There are four new prefix gear sets, Wild Flame, which increases attack, Nature, which increases health, Control, which increases your specialization effect, and Gale Blast, which increases your movement speed. The set effect will increase the more prefix gear you have. Three set pieces, you get your first bonus, an increased bonus at six set pieces. At nine set pieces, it will be its strongest. So how do you get prefix gear sets? raid by yourself and gear will drop in raids and you gotta sweep it up or raid with a group and each boss will drop gear too very cool well let's start off with the prefix gear set which prefix gear set are you most excited to use or kind of reflects your play style um guzu i'll start with you start with me okay uh <laughs> i don't know I'm don't make that face <laughs> Don't make that face. Oh my god. No, it's fine. Um, it's fine. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I mean, shoot. I don't know. It's it's a difficult thing, right? Because you want to use different prefixes for different situations, mm -hmm. I guess. It's it could That's be cool point. having it could be cool having something like uh with, with a lot of movement speed on. I remember when I played a bard. I don't know if you guys know this, but I played a bard pretty cool. And I uh I have like it's an ability. Wrong panel, it, man. Yeah. It's the wrong <laughs> panel. Yeah, it's, it is the, is it? Oh, no. no, I'm just saying, because I got the bard little... Oh, sorry. yeah, I, I didn't mean to interrupt thing. you. Yeah, True. yeah production but, still hasn't fixed it, man. Yeah, they it's had, like, an ability, I think, I recall, where, like, they, they played a little melody, and then they moved faster. And if you can do that together with also, like, a movement speed, like, attribute, then you could, like, mm. just, just be zooming through the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, that'd be so fun. So you're leaning towards Gale Blast, um, which increases your movement speed. Yeah. We also had um, Control, which increases your specialization effect. Nature, which increases health. Wild Flame, which increases attack. Um, Ampy, is there one that you're leaning towards oh, out of those, or maybe nine you piece do a Wild mix? Flame, full on glass cannon. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the the one I'd, I'd lean towards. Also, I just have to say that that set looks amazing. I love the graphics they have for the the cosmetics. I, it's actually yeah, the insane. cosmetics do look good. That, yeah, that, it's, it's that so is a good. good looking character. Yeah, love that. Um, yeah. How about Negro? What What do you think for the prefix gear set? Was there one that you were leaning towards? Well, so technically, I should be going for something that gives me some more survivability. You know, like I should probably go for stamina or movement speed so I can actually dodge out of things. 
quicker because my reaction time is just getting slower and slower honestly but, <laughs> that, that, yeah. but i just know i'm gonna go for like the damage yeah <laughs> like it's just yeah. not happening love that and canon what about you uh, yeah definitely damage for sure <laughs> for sure I mean, if okay, you're not running great. damage, you're, you're you're not going to be in my group unless unless you're a tank. <laughs> okay, Pretty got much. it. Yeah. Um, so Guzu was the only one who said that they do a little bit of a mix. Otherwise, uh, I'm just hearing a lot of attack here. So, okay, great. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the legendary weapons a little bit. Um, man, I I loved how these look aesthetically, and I think all of us were just like, oh my gosh, this like flame fire kind of design and feel for the weapons in this winter frozen world is so cool um were there thoughts on this new concept it's it's never before seen with this game um negro why don't i start with you what was kind of your your first impression of all all the legendary weapons yeah well first of all i think they all look absolutely amazing i'm personally just a little bit sad and this is just my personal preference but i don't like like when i see something like a bow and arrow or i see like an axe or swords, I mm -hmm. prefer that over like the staff style, mm -hmm. even though the staff also looks amazing. But mm -hmm. I'm more of like a range player, like a, a mage player. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit sad that I can't have the bow and arrow. I mean, I could, but you know. <laughs> but I do like the concept of the legendaries. They obviously look amazing, and the fact that you can build on them is really cool. And I also like the fact that uh, initially, like obtaining the legendary in its base version is not that difficult because i personally mm -hmm. have a little bit of a like love hate relationship with legendaries in games where i feel like okay they are really cool but if it's super super difficult to to obtain them then i feel like it creates this like unfair environment where some people have them and others don't and uh i don't like that so the fact that everyone can get the initial version and then you just build on it i think is really cool love that answer um ampy i see you nodding your head so were you agreeing with some of the things negra said what were your thoughts on the weapons um yeah i mean I, I i agree that it's pretty cool to not have like some really low rng you know legendaries having it kind of a progression system and i think it also is really cool with um being able to upgrade your legendaries it kind of gives like a visual progression to your character's power as well with you know the upgraded axe or the bow as it gets stronger Okay, awesome. Canon, um, what were your thoughts on the legendary weapons? I mean, visually they look great. Uh, I think the last time I played, I played the bow and arrow, bow and arrow class. So like the bow looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like the idea of having a base weapon and then you just kind of essentially empower it and then you just continue to, you know, in, in this case, feed gear into it or feed mats into it. Um, because that process can be can be really fun rather than having to farm like different pieces of gear that get that might be rare or like a super rare drop from this boss and you know not that that's bad but i i think this system can be fun so it'll be interesting to see how how it actually feels in game okay liking that you're positive about the progression system here um Guzu, do you have any thoughts on the progression system the legendary weapons in general uh I'd say to, 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 I guess to mention something a little bit different, I think the, the visual progression is cool because it did look like there was some visual progression when you're upgrading a weapon as well. And one of my, I guess you can call it a little bit of a gripe, I suppose, when I played originally was there was not a lot of visual progression with my character uh, outside of the MTX, which is, you know, stuff that you oh. can get within the game. Uh, but I really liked that, that there, there's an item that you can see like, okay, he's got the legendary. Okay, he's at this level of it. I think that's really, really cool that there's actually some an item that you can get that's like okay you they have this item you know and it it, it mm -hmm. gets better and better so i think that's cool i like that a lot for sure the visual uh, progression of it and that it's you can actually see that, that this is the legendary weapon Oh, great. Okay, well, I cannot wait to see what you all do with your new gear and legendary weapons. But, okay, now that we've covered the big announcements, let's chat about why we love Terrace Lane and just go down memory lane. Um, so I, I definitely want to start off asking, what was your favorite class to level and play so far? I feel like I'm kind of getting a sense of each person's play style and what they're vibing with. Um, Nigra, I'll start with you. All right, so I leveled a Paladin and a Mage a little bit. And... Even though, like I said earlier, more of a range player, like a magic kind of player with the staffs, I actually did prefer the Paladin playstyle. So I do think that I'm going to be sticking with the Paladin actually moving forward. Love it. I picked Paladin too, so. Well, awesome. I'm a Paladin too. 
Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah, Impy, tell me Paladin. more. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> why why did like you pick Paladin? Well, I I feel like I always gravitate towards melee classes, and I was originally going to play a tank Paladin, but Justice was a lot of fun. I I really liked the moment of glory you get when like your your holy power procs, or I don't I don't really understand how it works honestly, but you go crazy mode, and you could just spam all your buttons, and it's it's super fun. <laughs> We love spamming buttons, yes. Um, what about you? Uh, I actually usually gravitate towards melee as well, whether it's a great sword or gauntlets. But uh, but in this game, I think I would go for the ranger, playing the bow class. Uh, I That was the last class that I did play the last time I had logged in. And I just remember having a lot more fun with that class for whatever reason compared to... Um, the Shadow Swordsman, and I did play a little... The Paladin was fun. It was pretty good. Um, and I think just the Warrior. I can't remember what the last class I played, but yeah, I, I do remember having the most fun with the um, with the Rangers, so I think I would go with that. Okay, cool. Um, Guzu, I'm, I'm not getting Bard vibes from you, so I don't really know which one you would go with. So like, definitely going bard. I have no idea. Oh my god! I mean, I don't know. Listen, I'm I, I've been playing a little bit of Bard. Arcana was pretty fun with playing all the chords and stuff. It's actually like um, all memes aside, it's actually a pretty cool class because depending on which chords you play, you get like certain buffs, and it's it's a pretty dang class. But mm -hmm. I've also been playing a little bit of Warrior because I I just like Warrior. So I don't know. I, I either Bard or Warrior for sure. If I you know force a dibble dabble a little bit more with that. Dibble okay. dabble. No, yeah. it's a dibble dabble. I can't. Yeah, that's good. It's a dibble dabble okay. bard spec. Yeah. So, um, Cannon kind of talked about, um, you know, wanting to go, um, I think ranged, right, for season one. Mm -hmm. But would you guys kind of stick with what you're doing when going into season one, or would you maybe want to change it up for season one? Uh, I'll start with Nagra again. Yeah, so I think I'm actually going to uh, play the Paladin. So even though I tried Mage recently, I do mm -hmm. think uh, I'm going to go back to the Paladin and actually continue with that in Season 2, yeah. Okay, Team Paladin here. What about you, Ampy? You're going to stick with Paladin? or? Um, I haven't played any other classes, so with mm -hmm. the ability to kind of get level 40 right away on, you know, whatever, um, I think I would want to try other classes out. But for now, I'd definitely stick with the Paladin. Okay. Do I even need to ask, Guzu? Are we sticking with the bard? I just I don't feel know. Like okay? That's a yes. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm gonna girl. play warrior. I feel like I'm getting bullied over here. Stick with the bard. Stick with the I'm bard. Man. Oh, you look like world. a bard man. You look like a bard man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is a compliment. Yeah. I know. I was like, it's a compliment. compliment. Yeah. Okay. It's a compliment. Okay. <laughs> hey, Bard's got to be charismatic and like keep the vibes up. So, uh -huh. hey, Guzu, I'm glad you are. You have, Can you play any compliment. kind of musical instruments, Thank you. Guzu? In if I play musical instruments, yeah. Yes. Uh, and I... <clears throat> not great. Yeah, okay. not, 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 uh, not in a good way, but, you know, I can press <laughs> buttons in a video game. Mm, yeah, well, so funny, because for our next segment, Guzu is actually going to perform a musical segment. This was a surprise <laughs> impromptu. I'm totally kidding. I am totally kidding. <laughs> Look at his face. I Why am I getting put on the spotlight here? <laughs> Gosh, I'm totally kidding. You know, I do want to, you know, look back and talk about all this amazing content that we saw today. So what content are you most excited to experience in season one? We we showed you all some dungeons. We had that look at that raid. Um, we looked at the map, the prefix gear, legendary weapons. Um, I'd love to go around and maybe you guys like talk about some of your favorite things from the broadcast today. Um, Cannon, you're right next to me. So why don't you go yeah. first? Wow, I'm honored. Uh, <laughs> content that I'm looking forward to, I, I, I think it's definitely the raids. I, I, You know, the PvE in this game is actually pretty good. It was pretty exciting seeing a lot of people go pretty hard during the um, during the world first race for this game. I was actually pretty surprised as to how many people were, were invested in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Terrace Land has shown that, that they can put some pretty good raids together. So I think for me, it's definitely checking out what those raids would be. Okay, awesome. Negro, how about you? 
I'm the same. I'm a, I'm a raid person, I'm a high MPV person, so I'm definitely looking forward to raids. Now, I do definitely also love the legendary, so that's something that I'm also looking forward to. But yeah, ma definitely mainly the raids. Okay, Guzu? I mean, I feel like it's like a, we're just all repeating each other now, but yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That, yeah. that is the most exciting thing, though. Like, it's yeah. cause that, that's what's the most fun, I think, in... in in MMO the pizza for me. slices. Come yeah, on. the pizza slices, the big eye, you know, in the dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> the it's... eye, the eye again. Yeah, oh! yeah he's the it's eye. Good. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dungeons and raids. That's the most exciting, I think. Of course. Yeah. Okay, Ambi, you too. I mean, well, for me, there's no dragons in the raids, so I, I would say I'm looking forward to the dungeons more. Um... <laughs> No, but the raids do look really cool, and the mechanics look pretty pretty interesting and complex, so I think it would be a really rewarding experience. Um, the legendaries, though, honestly, if I had to pick one thing I'm most excited for, it's the legendaries. I just like shiny things. So, uh, get a fire axe on my paladin, I'm happy. I loved the fire axe. I hadn't said it yet, but every time the axe showed up, I was like, oh my god, I want, I need. Okay, well, definitely looking forward to season one. And just a reminder for all those who play, players can earn free rewards for inviting more players to return slash try out the game. So this is just a great time to get people into Terrace Land with you. There are also some important things that we need to talk about for guild leaders and content creators. So to show appreciation for those diligent, hardworking guild leaders, Terrace Land will be regularly awarding guild leaders with valuable items such as crystals. Also, Season 1 will gradually introduce large-scale guild events such as guild boss battles. Very, very exciting. And calling all content creators, Terrace Land is kicking off an exciting program lining up generous exclusive rewards and the latest cutting-edge content just for you. They'll also provide extensive promotion and exposure for standout work on their official platform. So that's pretty cool. Also, the brand new Dragon Raid Bounty Season 1 is about to kick off with the launch of Terrace Land's first 10-player raid. So get ready for a completely new gameplay experience, a revamped reward system, and a grand prize waiting for you. There are actually a ton of prizes, but wait till you hear about this ultimate prize. All members of the guilds ranked in the top 10 will receive an exclusive title and a limited edition mount. So to learn more about these programs and events, click the links in the description of this video. So lots of great stuff happening for the Terrace Land community, but okay, we ain't rapping yet, folks. We're not rapping yet. It is giveaway time, okay? So take a look at your screen. 2,000 of you can use this code and 2,000 of you will get exclusive in-game rewards. It's pretty awesome, right? But that's not all. Three of those lucky code users will also get an exclusive tiger or rhino mount. They look really, really cool. So grab your code now and you could win these exclusive mounts. And uh, I mean, at the bare minimum, you get those in-game rewards. So grab that code while you can, everybody. Three of you will get a really special prize on top of that. So yeah, grab those codes. Okay. That is a wrap, so I want to thank Canon, Amphi, Negara, and Guzu. Is there anything that you guys want to say to everybody watching at home? I'm sure you have some fans who've trickled into the stream here, so... You know what? I'll, I'll start with... Yeah, Negara, take it away. I, I wanted to say something, but they're all gone now because they're all entering the code, so I would be just <laughs> talking to no one. <laughs> no, I am excited for Season 1, and thanks for having me. This was fun. Aww, let's just go around. Um, let's go to Guzu next. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. I, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> uh, it, it was cool. It was, it was cool being a part of the, the you know, the little showcase here with uh, some new content for Terrace Land. So, pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> don't go back to me! I was really oh hoping God. that production would just leave it on that screen yeah. for a while, yeah. for like five more and no seconds. no one should have said anything. Oh, that would have been great, man. Production Pretty team, funny. you guys. Come on, man. Um, yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. It was fun uh, taking a look at all the uh, the new content that's coming out in Terrace Land. And um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say either, but thank you. Thank Aww. you. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having us. Um, it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm still... I'm still so excited to see the, the raid, honestly. So Aww. I hope you guys are too. 
And obviously, a big thank you to all of you watching at home. If you haven't played Terrace Land, head to the Terrace Land website, terraceglobal.com, or your app store, and download now. And today, the Blight Dragon season is now available on Steam, and Steam users will get exclusive mounts and rewards. So, what are you waiting for? Happy adventuring, everyone. See you next time.